Gram staining is a core method for differentiating gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. Recently, researchers developed a way to virtually gram-stain bacteria using AI and microscopy, overcoming limitations of the traditional method and highlighting the power of technology for transforming routine laboratory techniques. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, the American Society for Microbiology's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences. I'm Madeline Barron, Science Communication Specialist at ASM. Invented in 1882 by Danish bacteriologist Hans Christian Gram, gram staining remains a key method of bacterial identification. It is routinely used in clinical settings to help identify pathogenic bacteria causing an infection. It's also used in other fields like environmental monitoring. Gram stain differentiates bacteria based on the thickness of the peptidoglycan layers surrounding the cell. Gram-positive bacteria have a thick peptidoglycan layer and stain blue to purple, whereas gram-negative bacteria, which have a thin layer, stain pink. The staining process involves treating fixed bacteria with crystal violet dye, which is taken up into the cells. Iodine is added, which binds to crystal violet ions, bulking them up to prevent them from easily leaching out of the cells. Gram-positive bacteria continue to hold onto the purple dye even after being treated with ethanol, which dehydrates and closes the pores in their thick cell wall, trapping the stain inside. In gram-negative bacteria, however, ethanol dissolves their outer lipid membrane, allowing the dye to seep out. Treatment with a counter stain turns the now colorless gram-negatives pink, while the gram-positive remain purple. Now, despite its widespread use and utility, gram-staining has some limitations. The manual staining preparation and analysis can take one to two days, which in a clinical setting can delay diagnostic decisions. Individual variability in how staining is done may influence the consistency and reproducibility of results, how experienced someone is, whether the sample is prepared properly and or is of good quality, and differences in reagents and timing can influence staining results and ultimately how those results are interpreted and used. As for all laboratory assays, the chemicals used in gram staining must be handled with care and may pose a safety risk if handled incorrectly. These limitations, coupled with the rise of AI, have led scientists to question whether we need the chemicals at all. That is, is it possible to virtually gram stain bacteria? According to a recent study published in Science Advances, the answer appears to be yes. The study leveraged a deep learning model, and before we go on, it's useful to understand what that even is. Deep learning is a form of machine learning, which itself is a subset of AI that mimics how the human brain processes information. It learns by example, identifying patterns and predicting outcomes from lots of data. For example, deep learning models can be trained on many images of cars, and after learning the patterns that define a car, the model can identify whether a new image contains a car. In this study, researchers trained a deep learning model using stacked dark field microscopy images of unlabeled bacteria, as well as corresponding bright field images in which the bacteria had been gram-stained using traditional methods. The experiments used two bacteria, either alone or mixed together, E. coli, a gram-negative, and Listeria innocua, a gram-positive. The goal here was to teach the model features of gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria using the dark field images and to match those features with the corresponding gram stain so that when shown dark field images of unstained bacteria it had never seen before, the model could correctly classify the cells and virtually color them based on this classification. And it worked really well. Comparing virtually stained images to the same slides that had been chemically stained revealed a high level of visual agreement. You can see in this image that the chemically and virtually stained images are essentially identical. Quantitative evaluation of the virtual staining method supported these results. The model made mostly true positive predictions for each bacterial cell, that is, predictions that matched the chemically stained images, with few false negative and false staining predictions, which, respectively, describe when a bacterium is present in the chemically stained image but is missed by the model or is stained incorrectly by the model. Overall, the model had a precision of 95.5%, indicating it is good at marking cells as stained when they are actually stained. It also has a high recall of 96.5%, which points to its ability to find almost all the stained regions in an image. Now, in conventional gram staining, classification depends on the thickness of the peptidoglycan layer. Is the same true for virtual staining? Dark field microscopy captures light that is scattered by bacterial cell walls, and because of their different cell walls, gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria scatter light differently. The differences in light scattering captured in the dark field images is used by the model to classify the bacteria. Other spatial features of the bacteria are likely also involved in the staining and differentiation process. The scientists note that their virtual staining method offers several benefits. For one, it can be performed on a computer and does away with the manual steps involved in traditional gram staining, plus reduces the operational costs associated with it. 
Within that vein, the method is less sensitive to human errors and variability and chemical variations, allowing for higher consistency. There is also great potential for training and applying the model to a diverse range of bacteria. Now, there are some caveats to the approach as well, one of which is that the accuracy of the predictions depends on the quality of the images used for training. If there are imperfections or artifacts in the conventionally stained training images, those inaccuracies can be carried over into the test data sets. As noted by the study authors, this could inflate error rates by increasing the number of false positive or false negative predictions made by the model. Despite this caveat, the researchers highlight that their, quote, virtual bacterial staining approach demonstrates robustness against external factors such as sample quality and environmental conditions, which often compromise traditional staining outcomes. Now, it's worth highlighting that this example is one of many in which AI is being applied to streamline and automate bacterial classification and analysis techniques, including for gram staining. For instance, a recent study in the Journal of Clinical Microbiology described a method for using deep learning to analyze conventionally stained whole slide images of blood cultures, which is a manual and time-consuming process. The study explored how well the model could classify gram-stained images of gram-positive and gram-negatives of different morphologies, showing it achieved an accuracy of about 85%. The scientists note that future work will focus on expanding the size and diversity of the training data set to improve model accuracy. There's also been explorations into using AI to differentiate antibiotic-susceptible and resistant bacteria, which we covered in a previous Microbial Minutes if you want to check that out. Ultimately, as technology continues to advance, so does our ability to transform some of the most tried and true methods for examining the microbes around us. And that's all for today. If you liked this video, be sure to subscribe to ASM's YouTube channel for more Microbial Minutes. As always, I want to thank you for listening. Thank Ray Ortega for production, and I'll talk to you next time.